Okay, as you see, um, this presentation is um, um, confrontation of love and reason in Elif Shafak's uh, The 40 Rules of Love. And um, as you see in the introduction, uh, I mean, the table of contents, you can see the introduction and then the table of contents here. Um, like I'm going to speak about the concept of Sufism, concept of reason and the meaning of love, and then I'm going to compare them together and then come to a conclusion. So let's just uh, start with <clears throat> introducing the author. Alif Shafak is a Turkish author and um, she is a journalist and also um, she's very good in politics because her major is uh, political science. And uh, she's born in France, but uh, actually um, originated from Turkey. So she has lots of uh, novels. And interestingly, uh, although her major is policy and politics, uh, but uh, most of her works are related to re literature because she's very much um, um, into uh, the culture of um, his, uh, her country of origin, which is Turkey. So the subject of her works are mostly about mysticism and Sufism. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so she also won uh, many um, valuable um, literary prizes. Uh, so this is the book which is very famous and it is widely read uh, in the world and uh, also translated to uh, more than 40 languages and the main story um, is about the story of Rumi and Shams which are a very well-known um, uh, Sufi uh, leaders in the school of um, Sufism. But on the other hand, we have a parallel story, and uh, it is the it is happening in the modern age. And the main character in this story are two characters of Ella, which is a simple housewife, and Aziz, who is a, a Sufi in the modern age. So, um, in fact, uh, Alif Shafak is trying to make a connection between the uh, 13th century thoughts of Sufism and its impact on the uh, modern age in on a very simple character like uh, Ella, who is a housewife and living in Boston in the United States. So he, she still wants to show how uh, the Sufism and the thoughts from the East, uh, from the East is uh, impacting the very simple people, if they go and see the world through the angle and through the perspective of Sufism. So uh, the in, another thing is the very uh, interesting um, narrative technique because there are 17 characters in this story and all the characters are telling the story from their own point of view. But most of the stories are <coughs> centered in 10th, 13th century. And in the modern age, we have only two characters which are speaking and then we see how they are transforming from the very simple stage of, for example, uh, the, the negative stage of despair, hopelessness, to the stage of hope and um, awareness. So this happens in the character of Ella. On the other hand, we see the same uh, change in um, in the character of Rumi. Rumi is a very, very famous uh, poet and also a Sufi leader. Many people who are into the mysticism and Sufism around the world, they know him very well. So Rumi also changes in this, um, in this process by the teaching of Shams. Shams is not a well-known character, but he is a very wise character because he gives the thoughts of Sufism to Rumi and changes him from a very simple um, religious preacher to a poet and to a, um, um, to a Sufi. 
So another thing is the spiritual, uh, the main thing is the, the spiritual journey in these two, uh, in these two characters. So she is trying to make a comparison between 13th century um, uh, character of Rumi and the modern age character of Ella. So this is how the plot and the structure looks like. We can see that the, 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 the book is contained of five chapters and it, uh, it is stated with the names of water, fire, sand, wind, and vacuum. <clears throat> so as I told you, you can see at first that the novel begins in the modern age in the house of Ella, who is a housewife and she has a uh, marital problem. She has problem with her children, problem with her, with her husband, and she has many despairs and hopelessness. Actually, she's a wealthy character, but the materiality didn't bring any hope to her inner world. So little by little, we see in the story that Ella, uh, she wants to be an editor. So she gets the first book to edit and the name of the book is The Sweet Blasphemy. The name of the author of The Sweet Blasphemy uh, is Aziz. So Aziz is a Sufi. So Ella, by reading this book, step by step, gets familiar with this very uh, special thought. It is very strange for her. On the other hand, by reading, she tries to see the world from this angle. So little by little, she tries to apply these thoughts and these um, rules to her life. So she sees how uh, the world has changed from her perspective. And then she, we see that at the end of the story, she changes to a, a courageous woman. She, she, she gains the hope and she um, changed the step from the dis despair to hope. So this also happens in the 13th century, as I told you, uh, uh, we, we just move from the modern age to 13th century, again, modern age to 10th century. It is intermingled together. This is the characteristic of narrative technique by Elif Shafak. That's why this becomes very interesting novel and, uh, and many people liked it because it's a special way of narration um, uh, in the in the modern literature. So um, the thing which was very interesting for me to study this, as you, but first of all, I just want to say this book is also translated into Korean language, and you can see the cover page of the novel. the The name is Saship uh, Kaji Sarangi Popjik. So if you buy this book, you can also read this book in, in, in Korean and you can just find um, how, the, how the novel looks like. So the important thing is that there is a binary opposition in this story. As, you, as I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about past and present. I'm speaking about East and West. So hope and despair. So you can see body and spirit. So this is always in a binary position. So the thing which made me very much um, interested is that why there is always focus on love. So if there is a binary position, there should be another side and that is the side and the, another binary is reason. So we have a binary position of love and reason in this story. Love can contain many things. It is not just the spiritual love, Actually, spiritual love is the fundamental and the basic one in the school of Sufism. But in this, in this novel, we can also witness the, the, the mundane love, the love between human beings, that how, how does she depict it? She tries to, tries to show different layers of love and shows that from the simple love, human love, step by step, we can change and reach to the, the ultimate love that is love of God because the ultimate goal of Sufism is unity with God. So this is the binary position, and we can see this is the theory of Derrida that says one side of the binary is always privileged over the other. So in this story, and even the school of Sufism, um, love is always privileged over the reason. And um, it is very interesting to know that in Sufism, 
there is always uh, there is always conf conflicts between the Sufis and the philosophers. The philosophers are blaming the Sufis that why you just focus on love. With love, you cannot study the world. With love, you cannot you cannot know the God. On the other hand, Sufis are uh, blaming the blaming the philosophers that reason and thinking has many limitations by reason thinking and thought you cannot go beyond the boundaries of calculation and quantities loves makes you the the, the concept of love and love makes you to fly over these boundaries and the, with the two wings of love you can reach to the unity so uh, when you start le uh, reading the the novel you can see the state of uh, 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 Ella's position in the modern age that she says that, uh, that she says building her whole life around her husband and Ella lacked any survival techniques to help her cope with life's hardship. So she's suffering, but she doesn't know how to cure her um, uh, suffering and her um, despair. So um, I I just thought uh, I just talked about what is Sufism, but here you can also see uh, we can see two sides of Sufis and the philosophers. I told you, uh, Sufis are concentrating on perception, revelation, and love, and on the other hand, philosophers are, are focusing on thought, reasoning, and science. So, uh, the 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 concept of Sufism, the 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 school of Sufism, and the thoughts of Sufis is based on law. So it is a kind of um, school uh, is a style of life and as we see here when a when a true level of god goes into a tavern the tavern becomes uh, and changes to a chamber of prayer but when, when a wine bible goes into the same chamber it becomes it becomes uh, and changes to a tavern so we can see that the world inside is very important not the world outside or a sufi who goes to a um, 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 who goes to a tavern? Uh, so um, it the word inside is the main thing that changed the tavern to a chamber of prayer. This is the main thing that Sufism tries to focus on. It is not the world of uh, the outside world that changes you. The world inside that you have to practice and changes your view towards life. So you can see the seven stages that a Sufi goes through, like repentance, abstinence, uh, renunciation, poverty, patience, confidence in God, consent to consent, uh, consent to God's will. So um, the main thing is the spiritual and mystical dimension of Islam. That uh, mostly when the other peoples are trying to introduce Islam is by the the, the very concrete things, but um, Sufism is trying to focus on mystical dimension of Islam, which is ignored by many of uh, philosophies, is Islamic philosophical uh, philosoph uh, philosophers. So they are trying to build this part, which is more important for them. So uh, Sufism is a journey that a Sufi takes from the point of knowing yourself. If you know yourself, then step by step, you're going to know your God by submission, and patience. So you are going to keep yourself and expose yourself to every situation. Don't ignore the situations in your life. You have to expose yourself to them in order to become courageous. Not with thinking that whether I do or this, expose yourself and just confront it so you will gain courage. This is important. So um in when we speak about reason um i just um try to see okay what is reason is looking like in the eyes and in from the perspective of a sufi um uh, there is a uh, two two sides of reason uh and if you, you read if you read the poems of um uh, uh, rumi you can see that he he introduced it in two poles like partial wisdom and, or knowledge or reason, which is the very um, elementary level of reason, which comes from sense and theoretical reason. And on the other hand, it's complete wisdom and knowledge, 
or the 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 or the reason complete reason so which is derived from intuition uh, soul purification and evolution um sometimes uh, rumi tries to say that what makes a human being different from the other creation is the reason so reason is important by reason you can you can live very um, um you can live in in life easily not uh, it makes you the difference this is what how 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 is the difference between the human being and other creatures and animal but in the case of uh, uh, unity with god the reason is not sufficient we need another thing like law in order to reach to this level um so uh in the second um, rule of the 40 rules of uh, law it says that the path to truth uh, the path to, to the truth is a labor of the heart i'm sorry uh, labor of the heart not the head uh, make your make your heart your primary god not your mind meet challenge and ultimately prevail over your nuts with your heart so um we can see that they are trying to teach to the students or the mm, the people who want to come to the uh, the, the um, territory of sufism that how you have to change uh your view and start to read start to understand the world and start to control your body with your heart and not with your mind so uh, this is the concept of reason. And then we can move to love. I, I spoke about love. And then um, the thing which I wanted to want to mention is that the, the, the relation between uh, Aziz and Eliza, I told you the impact of Aziz as uh, the writer in the modern age was very um, uh, uh, crucial and important uh, on Ella's character. So uh, Ella, um, starts to understand what is the real meaning of love is and even if she's in west she is influenced with a person uh, from east so she tries to even travel to istanbul in order to meet aziz and a kind of love, love relation love between these two human beings i told you this is another level of love it starts to create so by creating and uh, the sort of the mundane love between these two characters, the character of Ella and Aziz, we can see that it could start to make the first step of love in order to uh, open and pave the way and, and the, um, the road towards uh, love of God and unity with God. So, uh, if we look at the character of Rumi and the impact of uh, Shamsa Tabrizi, who had, um, she, he, he had influence on Rumi. Uh, he goes to Baghdad and then he hears about Rumi, who is a very famous scholar. So he wants to share his feelings and thoughts uh, to Rumi and make him, him know about the other side of religion. Religion is not just in the books, it's not, it's not just the, 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 the um, um, what is that, the principles that we read in the books. It is something that um, the main thing is the spiritual point of view, that we can change um, our view toward that. So he tries to show the other side of religion the mysticism, the spirituality. So when they are in connection together, when they meet each other, the, the, the uh, Rumi and Shams, we see that at first Rumi is trying to give sermons to the people. He preaches Islam to the people. And people love them, love Rumi so much. He was a very famous uh, speaker and a religious leader in his region. But when he becomes familiar, becomes familiar with, with Shams, he tries to abandon that side. He never goes to preach Islam anymore. He said, I have many things lack inside. And I thought that I know many things, but now I, I just came to know that I know nothing. So started to know God step by step from the other point of view. So her, his sermons changes to poems. Her langu his languages changes from sermon to poem. 
and he speaks of love as a method of life with symbolic and imagistic world. So this makes him, this makes it very, uh, this makes Rumi as a, as a, as a universal po poet and character. So loving God who is as perfect entity is easy, but loving human being with all their faults and blemishes is the real spirituality unless we learn to love God's creation. We can neither truly love nor truly know God. So uh, this is the word of Shafak that she, she tries to mention it. As I told you, uh, she tries to show the, the several la layers of love. And she says that um, there is also love between human, love, love of creatures, love of universe, love of human being. By loving them with all their faults and all their deficiencies, we can uh, make our character so perfect to go to the higher levels uh, to um, uh, unification. So um, this is how the two, two poles are trying to um, face each other. And we see that the heavy side is the side of love. So Shafak defines the difference of uh, intellect or reason and love in a way that the seeker changes in the spiritual journey for pur purification of the soul, where the intellect and reason leads to caution, but love leads to courage. Intellect ties people in knots and risks nothing, but love dissolves and tangles and risks everything. Intellect is always cautious and advises, beware too much ecstasy, whereas love says, oh, never mind, take the plunge. Intellect does not easily break down, whereas love can effortlessly reduce itself to rubble. But treasures are hidden among ruins. A broken heart hides treasures. So with a very beautiful and simple language to a very ordinary reader, Shafak is trying to show that how these two concepts are different from each other. We don't say that reason is bad. We don't say that reason is un, not necessary in, in Sufism. It says it is necessary, but it is not sufficient. So um, mm, we can see uh, here also in this slide, I tried to speak about uh, the concern of Sufism, which is ultimate love and union with God. So um, uh, for reason has limits and a person cannot uh, move beyond the limits of reason. And um, Rumi uses very um, interesting, uh, interesting example to say how uh, reason is insufficient. He says, re, uh, Rumi, uh, he says that, uh, for example, uh, a person is going to a tailor shop for a new cloth. cloth. So um, the mind of that person can take this person only to the tailor shop, but in in the place which he goes there to make the new cloth, the, the reason cannot do anything. You have to put this um, um, duty on the shoulder of the tailor to do that for you. So he wants to say that how a reason is insufficient in this case with this, with this example in his poem. So sometime he also, uh, Rumi, also uh, or in the school of Sufism, because there are many famous Sufis around the world in from the past ages till now, they try to um, even say that sometimes reason is misleading. It is not leading, it is misleading. Uh, and it's sometimes mischief maker. Why? Because it's much more um, con concerned about the calculation and uh, quantities, not qualities. So um, we have lots of such kind of example in the school of Sufism. They, and most of them say they say their words in the form of the language and versified words. So I just come to a conclusion here that um, as I told you, the story of uh, 40 rules of law can be seen as an effort to break the monotonous and routine uh, of life and the rules to fight the monotony and go beyond the surface and reach the deep meaning of love is introduced through 40 rules, which are the rules of love that a person has to apply in every condition of his or her life to reach salvation. 
So Alif Shafak depict, depicts the main story of Rumi and his transformation by the teaching of Shams that uh, transform Rumi from a scholar and a religious teacher to a true seeker of God and a poet who has broken the ordinary view of life. And Shams' greatest gift to Rumi was the power of intuition and pure language. On the other hand, uh, there is a parallel story uh, uh, about an ordinary housewife of Ella in the present time, who gradually changes her view of life with the help of the Sufis instruction by Aziz. So she found hope and the real meaning of life by the true meaning of love and a spiritual journey. So um, 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 at the end, I just want to say that uh, to know the meaning of um, love or the, the thoughts and concepts of Sufism, it is very um, interesting to read uh, this, this book because uh, it has a wide audience around the world and it is uh, uh, translated to all the 40 languages and still it is read, it is, it is um, published um, in a huge amount and it shows that this is this angle and view of life, how it's how much interesting for the modern people in the modern century. And thank you so much for listening.